Hello friends, it's time to get spooky! <laughs> Guys, I am so excited for this reading vlog this week where we are going to be letting spooky reading prompts pick what I read. So I made a list of spooky Halloween, spooky time, autumnal themed reading prompts with my patrons on all our reading sprints and we're going to be spinning a wheel to get a random reading prompt and then we're going to be reading a book based on that reading prompt and I'm so excited. I just want to read spooky autumnal books. I'm so here for the seasonal reading this week. I want to read Murder Mysteries, I want to read horror, I want to read dark academia, I want to read vampires, I want to read anything spooky, ooky, ooky, creepy. Spooky, ooky, cooky, and creepy. So I am so excited. <laughs> Let's, shall we just go and find out what our first book is going to be? And I don't know how many books, we're just going to do this for the week. Or maybe not quite for the week, because I'm going away on Sunday. So today's Monday. <laughs> so um, probably read two to three books, three books. We're going to aim for three. We're going to aim for three in this. I mean, I could read them quicker. Who knows? Who knows? But shall we go find out what our first spooky reading prompt is going to be and thus what our first book is going to be? I'll, I'll show you quickly. Here's a quick scroll through the prompts. We've got a lot. <laughs> We've got a lot. It's a shame actually we're not gonna like do like, how many have I got? 36 different prompts. We've got quite a lot. So shall we just spin the wheel and see what prompt we've got? Oh my God, I feel so nervous. Let's go. <gasps> Shit, that's a hard one. Shit, shit, shit. Full moon on the cover. Fucking hell. Right, let's head over to my bookshelf. And see if there's any... Holy shit, full moon on the cover. All right, let's go do some investigating. Okay, I feel like this is like, there's books that I know have full moons on the covers, but they aren't necessarily spooky books. So we're trying to find both of those in one. So let's first look at TBR Cluedo. Books of being on TBR Cluedo. Oh, I was hoping The Gathering would have one, but no such luck on The Gathering. Hellion Death, no moon. Nope, nope. <laughs> I don't think any of the rest of these are really spooky. Witches of Moonshine Manor? A moon? No moon. <laughs> ooh, ooh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. So I know that has a, no, no moon. Shit. This is like the hardest one I could have gotten. <laughs> what has a moon on it that's also spooky? This has like a, fuck. <laughs> no. There's like stars, there's a night sky with stars. Otherwise that would have been perfect. Is that one on the back? No, no moon. Bloody hell, the Tainted Cup. Does this have one? Oh, but is that spooky? You know? Oh God. The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson. Again, a night sky, no moon. And is that a moon? I feel like that's a moon. Or that's a moon. There's something there as well. It, this kind of is spooky. Sherlock Holmes, it's like a fantasy murder mystery. Am I gonna read The Tainted Cup? Am I gonna read The Tainted Cup? Is there anything else? Oh, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. No moon. No moon. <laughs> Wait, let's take this seriously. Just Another Missing Person is a murder mystery. No moon. <laughs> Can people put moons on their covers, please? <laughs> Maybe we're gonna go with a tainted cup. I suppose this is spooky. It's a murder mystery. It's a murder mystery, it's a fantasy murder mystery. It's one I've been meaning to get to for the whole year. I've heard really good things about it. So I think we're gonna do this. Part Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, part through the looking glass, The Tainted Cup is one of the wildest, most original stories I've ever had the privilege to explore. Okay, I think we're gonna read this cause that's, either that's a moon or that's a moon. So we've got a moon one way or the other. So I'll check with you when I'm a bit of the way through this. I'm a little bit daunted by this. Don't ask me why, but I'm a little bit scared of it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the ways through.
Hello gorgeous humans. I have just been on reading with my patrons and in that time I have got 77 pages into the Tainted Cup. However, I don't feel ready to talk about this yet. I don't feel ready to talk about it yet. I don't, my thoughts aren't fully formed, not fully cooked. So I think I'm gonna try and get to halfway through and then talk to you. It's very unique. It's very special. Oh, that's quite a word to use, Megan. <laughs> so early on. It's very unique, it's a very interesting world building system. So I want to wait to talk to you about that, however I do want to talk to you about my serious light baby, my favourite thing in the world. This is my serious light, this is the high definition light and it is a reading light and I use it every single day of my life if I'm reading. Usually it's by my bed but when I do reading sprints sometimes I bring it over here. Well, I think about high definition light, I have the portable one so I can, look, I can move her around. She's not plugged into anything right now, you plug it into recharge but basically these are are reading lights that have something called daylight wavelength technology which replicates the daylight spectrum from the sun as closely as possible so what that does is it's very natural in the eyes it feels our brains are like oh yeah I know this mm, this is natural I'm evolved to consume this so it doesn't you know have any negative impacts on our eyes my eye strain I haven't had eye strain since I've owned this this light and I used to get eye strain quite a lot I remember when I lived in Leeds and after that there I'd get eye strain constantly. Whereas with this, it still has a cozy atmosphere. It's still like, you're still cozy reading, but it's making the page well lit for your eyes. And I love it so, so much. I use it every time I read. Now the days are getting, I can't believe how dark it's getting and the clocks are about to change here in the UK. My goodness. Uh <laughs> It's getting very dark outside. This is essential during these months. So if you've ever thought about getting one, maybe use my code MWB24 to get a hundred pounds off a high definition light, guys. A hundred pounds off, a hundred pound discount and free UK delivery. They can deliver internationally. They can fit with any plug you need if you're in the US, but my code is specifically for free UK delivery. So go check it out down below. I'll leave a link down below. I love my Sirius Light so much. For me, it's essential to my reading and I cannot recommend getting one enough. Okay, it's late and this book is a lot. So let's talk about it. Um, I haven't put the dust jacket on. I'm so sorry. Can I be asked? Where is it? Oh, hold on. I gotta try and balance. Whoa, she fell. She fell hard, bitch. I think that went worse than I possibly could have imagined. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you saw. I may not be able to show you that. I may have upskirted myself through this Udi. And also feet. I don't really see my feet. The feet are out. The dogs are out. Anyways. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Okay, The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I'm gonna try and talk about this in the simplest way I can because there's a lot of words, there's a lot of terminology, there's a lot of world building and you don't need to know all that. At, the, at its core, you don't need to know all that. So we're following a guy who is basically there, but it's a, an apprentice's investigator, but she is very eccentric and refuses to really leave the house. So when something needs to be investigated, he goes. And he's he's in this world, they, people have things that they can be like, like adaptations, either physical or mental, that they can install on themselves or like get work done on themselves. And he has something that he basically is like a photographic, permanent memory so he can remember everything he can remember every conversation everything he's seen and so the book opens with him going to this rich ass home where a commander has been murdered by a tree sprouting out of his body and it goes from there um this book's very interesting this is one of the heavier fantasy i've read in a while in terms of world building it's intense we've got a lot of like it opens up it reminds me of, um, I feel like The Will of the Many did this as well. The Will of the Many is set partially at a rich ass house as well. But you're like ranking of the military and there's like every month has a different name and all the money has different names. Like it's one of those, fan I don't read a lot of fantasy like that. Where like everything is different. And I'm enjoying it, but it's also taking me a while to get through it. Which of those do I want to start with? Let's start with the negative, then we'll end on the positive. It's slow for me. It's taking me a long time to read it. We may only end up reading two books in this vlog. My disappointment is immeasurable. 
and my day is ruined. It's a lot to get your head around. It's why I also had to wait. Oh, I'm halfway through. I haven't told you that. I'm halfway through the book. I had to wait till I was halfway through to really figure out what I thought of everything. And it's just taking me a long time to read it. I don't want to rush it because I think there's a lot you have to understand. Every scene has little quirks, has little, you know, it's incredibly detailed, which is a positive as well. We're just starting with the negative. It's just taking me a long time to get through and I'm finding it a bit slow. That's really my only negative. I'm loving the writing. I'm really enjoying the investigator and apprentice relationship. She is very interesting. She's obviously very Sherlock Holmes coded. Sherlock Holmes... Basically, it's basically a Sherlock Holmes retelling. And she, I wish there was a bit more of her, but she's a very interesting character and the dynamic is very interesting. He is very like, no emotion. It's interesting having him as narrator because of that. There's been a lot of world building. Like I said, I haven't been reading a lot of stuff like this. I have in the past, like I read like the J, the Greenbone saga or like Robin Hobb or like, you know, this more intense fantasy. But for the most part, I read more urban fantasy. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest. I don't read a lot of like intense, intense fantasy. There's been more murders. It's a, becoming a bigger murder mystery plot. I'm really enjoying the setting of it. I'm getting my way around the world building. I am intrigued about how long a series is going to be because I feel like a trilogy won't do it justice. Everything that we're setting up. I know the second book has been confirmed, but I feel like this has to be at least like a four or five book series really to get everything in that we need. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the writing. This is my first Robert Jackson Bennett, but Foundry Side is one that I always wanted to read. It was one that I was always interested in from kind of like what was around on booktube just before I came on, I feel like, and just as I was coming on. By the way, guys, I didn't realize in September, it was five years that I've been doing booktube. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. And I'm kind of sad I didn't do something to commemorate it. Even just like a little Q&A video or like, I don't know, maybe I could still do that. I don't know if you'd be interested. <laughs> but I'm kind of sad I didn't do something to commemorate because five years is a long time. I still feel new on booktube. I think because a lot of the people I watch and idolize on booktube started long, long before me and have been doing it a lot longer than me, but I still feel new. <laughs> I still, five years is like half a decade is kind of insane that I've been sitting on this internet talking about books. So I'm kind of sad I didn't do something to commemorate it. Maybe I still should, but five years, that's crazy. Anyways, um, more about this book. <laughs> it's intense. I wish I was reading it a bit quicker. There's moments where I find I'm not taking in the words and I have to go back and reread it again, which usually I wouldn't, you know, that would be like a kiss of death for me in a book. But there is a lot about this book that's positive. It's very, you know, the world building is so imaginative. The writing's really interesting. I'm enjoying the characters. I'm intrigued by the murder mystery. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Is it necessarily spooky? Not really, but it was spooky reading prompts. I'm, I hope I would really love to try and read three books in this video. But if I'm going to, if I'm honestly, I don't know if it's realistic. It's just not realistic. No, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If I could get like sh two shorter ones, the second books, maybe we'll try. But this book is taking me a long time to read. Anyways, I'm I'm gonna try and read as much as I can tonight. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fascinating, but I'm not entirely sure what I think about it. That's why I've waited halfway through. It's very different. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, the rest of it. <laughs> Hello friends, good morning. I have finished The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett and I'm giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I'd really recommend it to you. I, whoa, I'm like this. Sometimes when I start filming, I haven't properly planted my feet because I'm too excited to talk. <laughs> And I just start listening. Anyways, there's stuff I really enjoyed about it and stuff that I had a few issues with it. Let's start with the positives. This is a really interesting fantasy mystery hybrid. You guys know I love cross blending genres. I love historical mysteries. I, my favourite combination is fantasy historical mystery. Like urban fantasy set in our world, but historical and a mystery. Oh, Excellent. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Terrific. Very excellent. Fantastic. Beautiful. Supremely talented. Brilliant. Strange case of Alchemist Daughter. I'm looking at her right now. <laughs> so I loved the blend. It's very unique. I've never read like a murder, murder mystery like this in a fantasy world, I don't think. So that was very interesting. This book packs a lot into a short space of time. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of world building. There's a lot of the mystery going on. There's a lot of characters, which we'll get into in a second. And like that, I can see how that could be too much for someone, but I think it managed a lot of it pretty successfully. You know, I loved the reveal. I loved the journey that we took to get there. But I will say, there's a heck of a lot of characters in this. There's like 10,000 characters in this. <laughs> and often, I struggle to remember who these people were. They also have very like fantasy book names, you know what I mean? Like not like names I'm familiar with and thus I find them harder to remember. But there are so many characters and at times I could not, I was just making an educated guess. I was like, are you that guy or that guy? You're one of the two and I'm gonna make an educated guess as to who you are. And often I was right. But that did make following aspects of it a little bit difficult, I would say. And like, I was reading someone's review and they were like, cause I, li I, re I really like to read reviews like as I'm reading books or some people don't like to do that, but I like to do it. I like to go like see what people are thinking about certain things. And someone was like, oh, Robert Jackson Bennett's a great author to read if you're, you know, new to fantasy and like don't wanna dive in the deep end. I'm like, oh, I thought this was quite heavy. And there's a lot going on. Gagatandra. A lot of words, like I said, a lot of fantastical words. And a, a moment that I was, I'm a little bit out of practice. I was looking back, I don't read a lot of like high fantasy fantasy, like I was mentioning before. And also often the like high fantasy that I'm reading is often very much inspired by a, a real world culture and thus I find that easier to follow. Like I wouldn't be able to really, I mean, I could be wrong. I may just be realizing something, but like I can't pinpoint if there is, if this is based on a real world culture, which one it is. But yeah, I would really recommend this. I think it's a very, very unique special book. I'm gonna continue with the series. I loved the relationship and our two main characters, relationship between them and them and themselves. It reminds me, oh, it's back there somewhere. But if you've read um, The Devil on the Dark Quarter by Stuart Turton, it's very similar plot to that where you've got a <laughs> very charismatic, enigmatic, investigator detective, but they're kind of like not in the story much and you're more following their more boring <laughs> assistant and the book is narrated by them. So it's very similar in that regard. So there were moments where I wanted more of Anna, the detective. She's such an interesting character and we we're following, you know, our guy, Cole is his last name, um, a lot more, but I did find him interesting by the end. I just think it's funny. That's like a pattern between those two books that's quite similar. It reminded me all, like little aspects of this reminded me of lots of books I've read, but it was put together in a way that I've never seen done before. So yeah, I'm gonna give it four stars. I will continue with the rest of the series. It didn't blow me away though. And I was kind of hoping it would because like a 4.32 average rating is very high. Let's go find out what book we're gonna be reading next, what spooky prompt we're gonna get next. We are only gonna read two books on this video. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, that just took me ages to read. It's quite dense. It's quite, in but I found it quite dense. So we're only gonna read two books. That's four. <laughs> we're only gonna read two books. Um, so shall we just go find out what it is? What the other book we're gonna be reading in this vlog is? I'm hoping for like a really good prompt. and I'm hoping for something more stereotypically spooky season Halloween autumnal, you know? Okay, let me get the website up. Why am I so nervous? I feel so nervous. <laughs> I just want a good book. I want something spooky. Okay, I'm just gonna click. I'm just gonna click to spin. <sighs> Deep breaths, everyone. What is it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Isolated setting. Okay. I can work with that. There's two books that I need to read that I think could both, they're not like locked room, but that's that's above it. It doesn't have to be locked room, it has to be isolated. Okay. First, we've got Helly and Death, which is a snowstorm, a country house, and the, uh, characters are all snowed in, but already the one I feel like I'm leaning towards is The Gathering. I think it's just vampires. I want to read a vampire book. <laughs> I want to read a vampire book. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. It's set in an Alaskan town where only 673 people live. A small Alaskan town. I think, I think this would count as isolated, right? Like the town is very much isolated from everyone else. I think I gotta read this. I'm just very intrigued by this one. The kind of like, is it vampires? And what CJ Tudor is doing with horror, I'm very intrigued by. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into this. I'm gonna read The Gathering by CJ Tudor. This is the kind of thing I wanted to read in this video, but this would have been a good option too. And they're both isolated settings, I think. 
But um, I just think this is the vibe that we're gonna go for. So I'm gonna start the gathering by CGT. I'm very, 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 very excited to get into this. And um, yeah, I'll let you know what I think when I am a little bit of the ways through. Good morning, friends. I am halfway through the gathering by C well, a little bit under. I'm 170 pages in. It's basically halfway. Um, through the gathering by CJ Cheetah. Firstly, I just realized that's supposed to look like teeth. What a gag. I only just realized that. Like the year of just realizing stuff and everyone around me, we're all just like realizing things. This is very interesting. So like I said, we're in a small Alaskan town, 600 people live there. A boy is murdered. The town believed it was a vampire from the nearby vampire colony that lives just outside of town. And our main character, Barbara, is kind of like, she's a detective and she's like a specialist in vampires, it seems. And she's brought in to try and solve the case. And everyone's very like, it's just a vampire, let us kill them, which is called a cull. They want to kill off the whole co colony, basically, which is illegal. So that's the first thing that's interesting about this book. I was like, at first I was like, oh, it's set in, it's set in our world. I'm like, wait, no, all vampire books are set in our world. But the difference is people know vampires exist in this one. So that all normal people know that vampires exist and they're kind of, people hunt them and they're a protected species. At the start, we have like these news articles kind of setting up some kind of uh, world building for us as them as a protected species, as them as indigenous people to certain lands, uh, which is very interesting. So that's basically the book, is her in this town investigating this and people being resistant to her wanting to find stuff out. And she's uncovering things Things about the case that aren't already aren't as what they seemed before and I'm really enjoying it here's the thing this is my fourth CJ Tudor I've given all of her books four stars CJ Tudor is a very solid four star off of me which I like I like knowing that she's gonna write a good solid book she's not gonna blow me away but I've read The Chalk Man, The Burning Girls and The Drift and they were all four stars and this one is feeling the same it could even be a 4.5 she may break the mold I'm really really enjoying it I'm loving the small town setting I'm loving the characters at meeting one thing that CJ Tudor does very very well is she does conversations so well. Her conversations between people feel very realistic and the whole book is very interesting because it's kind of got this like mundaneness to it that I really enjoy. It's got this like things are happening but they're not necessarily big shock review reveals. It's not drama. It's smaller, it's quieter, it's more mundane but it's fucking vampires you know and I like that juxtaposition. So I think there's a lot that CJ does does really really well and it's just like it's just an easy read compared to <laughs> the Tainted Cup, which I obviously enjoyed, but felt very taxing to read. This is just easy peasy lemon squeezy. And like I said, those conversations, I don't think you can underestimate, particularly in a thriller, how well an author does person to person contact. Like, I don't know, there's something about it that just comforts me and makes me happy as a reader. <laughs> like when a conversation flows and feels very natural. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of really interesting questions being opened up. I still feel like there can be so much more that we find out. I feel like it's been quite slow, but not in a bad way in terms of stuff being revealed. We found out, I'd say like four key pieces of information that have been sprinkled, but like that hasn't necessarily made me, I haven't got any theories for what actually happened in the murder, which is interesting. I think the vampire colony, we've had like a scene or two following them is very interesting. I'm just really enjoying it guys. I'm just really, really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm having a great time. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. I'm gonna finish this today. We're just gonna go out for a nice autumnal walk now, but I'm fascinated. I can't really predict where it's going to go, but I'm very much enjoying it. So yeah, I'll see you a little bit later once I finished it. Hello cuties, it is first thing in the morning, hence why I look like this, but I'm about to start reading something else and I just don't want to put another book in my head before I talk about this. I finished The Gathering by CJ Tudor, it's four stars. <laughs> this is what I mean, CJ Tudor is a four star, I am like waiting for one to break the mould, but this was definitely a four star for me. There's so many positives, but a few negatives. So, something that CJ Tudor has been doing that's so interesting with this and her previous book is mixing genres that are similar, but mixing them so well. So this is horror, a mystery, a thriller, a police procedural, all in one. All in one. It's got troops of all of those. If you go into this book expecting it to be any of those, like you think it's gonna be a horror or a thriller or a mystery 
or a police procedure. You'll be disappointed. You've got to go into it accepting that it's all of those things. Like the drift was a mystery thriller horror. She blends these genres and tropes these genres and features these genres so, so well. I'm loving, the, she's, she's only just started doing it in these last two books, but I'm loving that aspect of it. And I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this. This is just a great book. It's the kind of book that makes me think like, isn't it crazy that we all just sit down and write these stories and share these stories and come up with these like lies? <laughs> <laughs> we all just read them. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. Like, I don't know, I could just, I just really appreciate this as a book, you know, it's a book. It's a book, you know? It's not trying to do anything different, necessarily, apart from the blending of the genres. Like, it's fairly typical, but it's, it's just a good book. It's just a good book. The atmosphere in this is incredible, set in this small Alaskan town. It's isolated, there's a storm rolling in. I thought, you know, if you're looking for a very atmospheric, wintry book, this is a great recommendation. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I will say, however, I did feel like the ending was a bit rushed. And even this morning, I finished it last night, and I even this morning I'm like, so who did that? Like, in terms of, like, the bad acts. Like, because there's a few different, you know, like, any any of these books, it's very rarely, like, one person is the big bad. Like, you have a few different people. If there's a lot of different things that have happened, you have a few different people who have done things. And I'm like, well, who did that part? And who did that part? Like, I'm struggling to remember. So, I would say the reveal is not the strong part of this. And there was, I had an idea in my mind of what, like, there's, like, an end reveal that's, like, a little question that's been running through the book, not, like, a who done it, but like a, yeah, like a little question. And I had an idea, and if that idea had been what had happened, it would have been Gagatrondra. It would have been Gagatrondra. Mm. It would have been Gagatrondra. I will just say, I haven't, I need to go read some reviews. I don't quite get the epilogue. Anyone who's read this, you can put spoilers in the comments, like, like do spoiler and then enter a couple times so the rest of your comment is hidden. But I don't understand the epilogue quite. It feels like it's setting up for a sequel, which isn't something CJ Chijo has done before, but maybe? Maybe we're gonna get this vampire police procedural series from C. Chijo, which I would not be mad, but I'm a little bit confused by the epilogue. So I feel like the ending, bit rushed, not entirely clear, but the rest of the book was just a great, great journey. And I had so much fun reading it and I'm so glad that I read it because this was the perfect time to read it. If, you, if you've got this on your TBR, read this before the end of the month. It's just so much fun. It's just a fun book, you know? It's a fun book. You can't go wrong. Anyways, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching this reading vlog. Apologies it was only two books, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I've got two very, very, very long books in my next vlog, so I gotta get ahead. <laughs> I gotta get going on that. But thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you've read either these. Oh my god, they were both 2024 releases as well, though, which is pretty good. Um, let me know if you've read either of them and what you thought of them, your opinions. I would love to know. And I love you all so much. Thank you for being here. Have a spooky time this Halloween, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!